Hi, hello, and welcome to Post 16 Careers Week, hosted by Stockport Council and Stockport Jobs Match. I'll be one of your guides, my name's Ari. And I'm Ali, we hope you'll find these short guides useful, to start conversations and spark ideas. You can always go to the website for more detailed information at stockportjobsmatch.co.uk. Don't forget to use the Virtual Careers Expo, visit the stands, and see what the providers have to offer. In today's guide, we'll be exploring some of the main points about apprenticeships, and vocational qualifications. We'll look at where you can find vacancies, and some of the challenges you might not have considered. As well as how vocational qualifications, are different to A-levels. Right, let's start. Pretty much everyone has heard of apprenticeships. They've been around in one form, or another, for centuries. Ari, did you know that parents in the Middle Ages sent their children away to be apprenticed? I'm not sure that's part of the modern scheme, but the tradition of learning a skill from an experienced master is still there. And the modern apprenticeships are flexible, you can do one at pretty much any age, and in a wide range of levels. As well as being paid to do it. When you're thinking of applying for an apprenticeship, the levels might seem confusing. As a guide, an intermediate apprenticeship is at a similar level to GCSE. An advanced apprenticeship is more like a level 3A level. Since apprentices are employees, like a job, you'll find all of the employer's requirements listed on the vacancy. And you can find those vacancies in lots of different places, pretty much anywhere you will find a job listing. As part of our interactive sessions we'll show you how to create a profile on a site, and upload a CV, ready for when that perfect job comes along. When you're below the age of 18, an apprenticeship must last a minimum of 12 months, and an employer needs to pay you the minimum apprenticeship wage, which is currently £4.30 an hour. You'll spend 80% of your working hours with your employer doing the job, and the other 20% is pulled off the job. This is the time put aside for you to attend college, or see your assessor to do your vocational qualification. In order to complete your apprenticeship you'll need to pass what is called an end point assessment. Along with any maths and English you may be retaking or upskilling, your assessor and workplace mentor will help you prepare for the EPA. As an apprentice you are an employee, with a contract and the same employment rights as the other workers, including paid holidays. With that salary, comes the possibility of paying tax and national insurance, as well as contributing to a workplace pension. Being hired as an apprentice isn't easy. There's no guarantee that a suitable apprenticeship will be available, and competition can be intense. Not only will you be up against existing employees, but also more experienced young people, and adults wanting to change career direction. Unlike every college places, where the government guarantees every young person a place, Employers only recruit apprentices when they need to, and can choose who they hire. To give yourself the best chance try getting work experience, and spend time on your CV and practicing interview questions and techniques. In summary, if you feel ready to enter the world of work to gain skills and a qualification, and you know what career goal you're aiming for, then an apprenticeship is probably something you should look into. Vocational qualifications cover the broadest spectrum of subjects and levels, there are thousands to choose from. They are designed to give you a blend of knowledge, skills and behaviors that are required to do a certain role, or work in a certain industry. At a college, you might be able to study a vocational qualification such as a BTEC, alongside A-levels, and if this is something that perks your interest, then visit the Virtual Expo to find out more from the providers. Vocational qualifications are usually assessed in modules or units, using a variety of assessments such as short tests, demonstrations and presentations, projects and assignments. Some providers even have their own salons, garages and aircraft cabins for you to practice in. The entry requirements will depend entirely on the level and type of qualification you are applying for. You will find all of the details, as well as suggested progression routes in the provider's prospectus. Just as with A-levels and T-levels, a level 3 vocational qualification will take two years to complete, and your final grade of pass, merit or distinction, will convert into UCAS points. If you're wondering whether vocational qualifications are right for you, consider the following. Do you like to do as well as study? Do you have a pretty good idea of the job or sector you want to work in? 
Do you like the idea of varied assessments broken down into manageable chunks? If you answered yes to most, or all of these questions, then vocational qualifications might be something you want to explore in your career plan. So, that brings us to the end of our short guide to apprenticeships and vocational qualifications. We hope we've answered some of your questions, started some conversations, and sparked some ideas for your career plan. As always, more details can be found at stockportjobsmatch.co.uk slash careers options, and by visiting the Virtual Careers Expo. Thank you for joining us, see you soon.